we have somebody that's going to talk to us about her new ministry. Debbie Buffon is a, well, she a native of Brazil, but she's now an American, and she lives in Texas. And she's came out to, last year you saw her by video, giving her testimony of coming to Christ. This year we get to hear about the ministry that God has given her. So it's a ministry to Brazil, to her people, the people she loves. Some people would say that she is showing hatred by speaking against her former religion, but her ministry is a ministry of love, and she's going to talk to you about that. So come on up. My fellow Babylonians, <laughs> you know we'd say that, right? You pepperoni pizza eaters. I had my share, so um, yeah, and I'm happy that I did. Because I love what Richard said here in the beginning. We are not free to sin, but we are dead to sin, right? So, yeah, that's what we've been, we, we have been accused of. Oh, you want you, your freedom because you want to go on sinning. And they accuse us to be exactly what we were before we we're here. Because we believe that those people out there, the Sunday church believers, they were the Babylon, Right? But we have freedom in Jesus now to understand, to read, and to be blessed, and to be born again, right? So it always started, let me get something here, I forgot to bring, but I think everybody can say that always started with Del Red's laugh, and I'm too far saying that, because to me it was like 22 years ago, Yes, I'm that old. Someone sent me a Xerox copy of this book. Um, Sabbath and Crisis. It's Sabbath and Christ, right? This is the second edition, I, I guess, revised. was published in 1995, but only made it to my hands in the year 2000 when I moved from Brazil to the northeast of America, to Connecticut. And, of course, I got the copy from someone that I respect, a very good friend, and I threw it in the trash, <laughs> where it should be, <laughs> I, so I thought. But um, I, I start reading, because I had so many questions about you-know-who, Ellen G. White, we all do, because if you study, if you read the books, you read the Bible and you see that something is wrong. So you do have questions. So I wasn't that dumb. I, I, I was reading and I was not understanding and thinking that I was an idiot because I could not understand anything because you would not match up with what Jesus said, what, what the, the, the Bible said. So I, in 2006, I decided then to to buy the book. And this is, <laughs> it, it, it cracked me up because I was, re I was flying here and I had the book and I opened. Actually, I read through the book to the, the middle of the book. And I think I, I, I bought, I have the receipt here. It, it is an I, it's used book. I probably bought from an Adventist, I guess. <laughs> but there are some notes here that I made in 2006. And believe it or not, but I'm fighting here with Dell. You're wrong, sir. This is not true. These are all the notes that I have here. And then in the middle of the book, I stopped. But God wasn't done with me. I was done with reading, but I did not throw it away. I did not put it in the trash like I did with the copy. So I then had my questions, but... Growing up uh, in, in the Seventh-day Adventist church was kind of, you know, I keep thinking about the disciples and Jesus himself, because my question is, 
they were born under the law. Did they perceive a difference when the veil was ripped from top to bottom, when Jesus died and the new covenant was introduced and they were free? And did they feel like a heaviness of the law was taken out of their shoulders? Because I was not born under the law, but I was born under Adventism, which is the same. <laughs> so it was, you know, you all know, well, we, we all went through the same, the same things. So one day I decided that I could do better because I grew up in foster care and I, very early I learned that there's no unconditional love. I needed to be good or be gone. If I wanted to stay longer in somebody's house, I better behave myself very well. So I very early believed that I needed to do something. I needed to be good. And growing up, in the foster care inside the Adventist homes, I <laughs> learned very fast that I was completely lost because there was nothing I can do, I could do to be saved. If my own father and mother did not want me, would God want me? Of course not. But there was still maybe a chance because at 11 years old, I prayed to God and I said, God, just burn me fast because I know that I'm not gonna be saved. There's no way I can be that good like these people in the Seventh-day Adventist church are. And knowing that I was Jewish also was even more complicated because it was very confusing in between one settings of doctrines with the or orthodoxy of the other but kind of similar in some ways so that's how I grew up in one day when I moved here I decided that I was going to be better better than any seventh day Adventist as a matter of fact before I left I worked my first job right out of jo high school was in a bank and my second job was with a credential at the, one of the unions in the South American division. So I worked for, for the, the, the church, for the system. And I was one of the best workers. I was an asset for them. And I was an asset for the local church. Since a very young age, I was doing everything that I could do to be one of the best. But then I came here and I was introduced to the Messianic Jews. And to me, it was like, wow, I can be just what I am. And it, I, because I knew that Jesus was my savior and I could not deny him. I would not have never be accepted in the, in the mainstream Ju Judaism because <laughs> I'm a manzer, like they say, I'm not a legally, um, I don't know if I, 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 I'm a bastard. Can I say that word? I said it already. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it was hard, but then I decided that, well, I'm going to follow this. I know how to follow rules. I'm going to be even better. So I went full body, like everything that I could do to become a very good Jewish person. I even took the, you know, the vow, the special vow that's in Numbers six the Nazarite vow I took that vow can you imagine me not cutting my hair not eating not even the skin of the grape you have no idea how many people make salads with grapes <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um, I was just pray that none of my friends would die because I would not be able to go to the funeral and thank God not, nobody died but one day somebody invited me to go to a church of a man, actually, the pastor, Steve Gear, he has been here in this church, believe it or not, but his church is close to my house in Plano. Somebody invited me to go, and he was, he's Jewish, and he was speaking about the book of Galatians. 
And I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a book, Galatians. It's in the Bible. So he said some stuff like, who is your mother? Like, uh, uh, is your mother the, the slave or the free woman? And it caught my attention because, you know, I always had issue with the mother that I never had. So I went back home and I got the Bible and I had, I, I read the book of Galatians in a, in a day, it was short. And I was just like mesmerized. I'm like, who put this book here in my Bible? Because it is very interesting. So I then went to look for the book again to read. And I had seen some videos in the same background of um, Paul Cardin, uh, um, Colleen Tinker, Dale Ratzlaff, but I never finished the, the, the videos. I just saw, I'm like, these people are crazy. <laughs> Look at me right now. <laughs> this is a miracle. It's a miracle that only God can perform in our lives when we're open. And that's why I, I do this now. Because I went to look for something and I found and I sent a message to Colleen. And I said, do you by any chance have any meeting somewhere that I can like belong to? <laughs> and she said, yeah, we, come on. We have the Zoom meetings on Fridays that we do the study of the book of Ephesians. We've been there for 375 nights. <laughs> we we're still in the middle of it. Um, and then we had with Richard the book of Galatians. And it was just like, oh my gosh. So I went to, to the bookstore and I bought myself a new Bible. Because see, I have a Bible in Hebrew. And I have so many legalistic notes all over it. And I have so many other versions of the Bible with so many Sabbath school teachings, <laughs> comments in there that's just like impossible. So I needed to buy a new Bible and start from the beginning. And it's just so amazing because I, it's, they are teaching me, Colleen and, and Richard, and I'm watching the videos and I say, God, I am not the Dead Sea. I cannot just receive and receive and die. I need to share. So I need to share because God gave me this opportunity. And I, that's what I tell my, my friends decided to, to make a video to tell my friends, specifically my friends, because, you know, whenever I go back to Brazil, I see some people, but I cannot go to every state and I don't see everybody at the same time and some people cannot understand well all of them cannot understand why I left the remnant church it, it's very hard for, for them to understand so I said you know what I'm gonna make a video so everybody can know exactly why the reason why I, I left so I made a video and I, I told them the, um, my 28 reasons <laughs> so um yeah and i i think my channel now has like a little more than fifteen thousand views and it's amazing it's beyond i thought that god was going to take and what i do is try to open the, um, a way for these people to know that when they go to the book of john and they see Jesus himself talking to Nicodemus and telling him that he needs to be born again. That if he's not born again, he does not understand things from heaven. That's exactly the people of the church that we used to, to go. And if, if God saved me... If God gave me the opportunity to be born again, I want them to have the opportunity also because you guys don't know. It was taken away from you the right that you have to decide to be born again because you were wrongly thought that you don't even have a spirit. If you don't have a spirit, how can you be born again? And if you don't need to be born again, you don't need Jesus. So it is really a convoluted 
crazy teaching that goes on. I have received many, many attacks, but they're personal attacks. They just say, you know, you are touching the apple of God's eyes. And I respond, that's Israel, not you. <laughs> and they, are, they say, you are, doing, you are doing the work of Satan. They accuse me of that. And I said, Hasatan means accuser. And you are accusing me. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I, we, and then, but I always give them the Bible. And but one very interesting experience is someone sent me a message and she transliterated one word in Hebrew. And she said, that's what it means. And that's what it, it, it is in the text. So I got a little confused. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I got the Hebrew Bible and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> it's not. So I told her, say, look, the word's not that. In the term, the, the, the translation's not that either. And she said, you might be right. Well, I graduated. I did four years of biblical Hebrew. I think that I knew that I was, I was right about that. <laughs> <laughs> and, but she said, but you could be right, but I like the other term better. And then I said, you need to send an email to the author of Genesis because he's the only one who can help you. You know, it's, there's no way to. But anyway, what I say, what I do, and I, I, I'm, you know, asking for help for Richard and Colleen all the time. And then uh, I think now I met someone. It is so amazing how God does things because I am in touch with someone who is Pastor Martinez. He is a Brazilian pastor and he's head of the CACP, which is the Center for Apologetics. And Mr. Paul Cardin knows him. I mean, knows the center, right? And this man, he has translations of books that I thought we only had here in English. And they have it in Portuguese. I have been sending to my people and I just, um, we were talking to put this all available in the website. We're gonna have a little Portuguese part of the site. But my friends, you here, I praise the Lord for, for your lives and I praise the Lord for the opportunity for me to be here. But you out there, you who will be listening, watching today's um, video later, or maybe if you're awake, it's like 1 a.m. in Brazil, but whatever you are, um, you need to be born again because I wasn't born again. I was the best Seventh-day Adventist and I could not understand the word of God because my spirit was not alive because I didn't even know that I had a spirit. So when I, in Ephesians, Paul says that when I hear the message of truth, which is the gospel of salvation, and you can find the gospel of salvation in 1 Corinthians, thank you, Colleen, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. And that's the Jesus came to die for my sins. And he was crucified. And he was, um, how do you say, interred? Buried. <laughs> he was buried. And in the third day, he was resurrected according to his scriptures, not according to Ellen to White. Forget it. It's according to his scripture. That's very interesting that Paul says that there. And when you do that, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. And there's a guarantee of your inheritance. I don't have an inheritance. You know, I don't ha never had a family. And when I met my biological parents, they left me out of the, the will. So I don't. So inheritance is very important to me. And my inheritance that's guaranteed by the Holy Spirit is the one that's the, the owner, the maker of the universe is giving me and giving you. So thank you. Please pray for my friends in Brazil because it is hard to do and that God will bring someone to help me because 
we, it's true, Jesus is coming back. But many, many will be lost because there are almost two million Adventists in Brazil and they don't know that they are dead spiritually. So I just pray that God will open their eyes and give us wisdom to take this message um, further to all the countries that speak Portuguese. <laughs> God bless you.